And in case you can't tell from the way my uh, bench looks, I'm in the middle of a build. Uh, since I started this channel, I've had a couple of vendors reach out to me uh, with, with products they wanted me to, to look at and review and whatever, do a video about. And it was never a product I was very excited about or interested in or really thought that I would ever use, you know? So I, I just said no, because I'm not going to show you guys stuff just because I got it for free. I don't want to get stuff for free that, <laughs> you know, some ESC that I never would use anyway. Ooh, great, I got it for free. But recently, uh, I was contacted by a certain vendor whose name you might recognize, and uh, they asked if I wanted to uh, to see something and uh, maybe make a video about it. And I said, yes, yes, I definitely would. And here it is. You probably recognize this frame. This frame is uh, is called the QAVR, QAV-R from Lumineer. It is uh, is very similar to uh, a, the certainly other frame where this uh, arm design was introduced. Um, the QAVR is just sort of an evolution of that. Uh, I want to talk for a minute about this arm design before I go on and, and show you something new about the QAVR. When I first saw this uh, these arms, these four millimeter arms. I thought, oh great, you have four millimeter arms. That just means that instead of the arm breaking, the uh, the frame plate is going to break, right? You know, there's a principle in engineering which is that at a certain point, you, you're not you're not preventing something from breaking. You're just changing what breaks. You're just moving the stress around. And so, for example, and this is a tip I learned from flight test way back when. You know, you want to use zip ties, like little zip ties. Sometimes, I mean, these are just holding the ESCs on. They're not really structural, but when you're putting something together, sometimes you use zip ties, and this is David Vingestall who gave the idea, he calls them mechanical fuses. So something is gonna break, let's let's decide where it's gonna break and make it be something disposable and non-critical because at a certain point if we make if we make the arm stronger, now we're just moving the stress somewhere else and, and it's gonna break and maybe we'd rather have the arm break. So when I saw these four millimeter arms, I thought, oh boy, good, the arms won't break, the frame is gonna break, I'd almost rather break an arm. But I got to tell you, and unfortunately, I've got the, the OSD PDB and the flight controller mounted here, so I, I wasn't thinking very much. I was just in the middle of the build when I made this video. Um, but you can see photos of it uh, on the product page that these metal uh, brackets that, that the screws go into from the underside and the way the arms fit together, it is super rigid, like... like it is super, I mean, you can't feel what I'm doing here. You, you know, ooh, oh, yeah, it's super rigid. Um, it's super rigid and super strong. And it's very interesting because the, the frame plate is definitely part of the structural integrity. But if we compare it to like the common sort of QAV blackout design where you've got sandwich frame plates here and the arms fit in, right? Or maybe some of them, they'll do a, uh, a thing where the arm is a single piece. I can't remember the name of the frame that does that, but the arm is a single piece here, right? Um, or even if you, uh, you were to do like the QAV210 and have the whole bottom plate be a single piece. The thing is, if you've got a three mil bottom plate, right? You still can get some some flexiness in it, and especially if you've got a scenario like this. Like if you look right here, I don't even know if you can tell, but when I broke this arm, this top plate kind of cracked right here. You you almost can't see it. In fact, you probably I don't know if you can even see it, right? So it's just it, it's sandwiched and it's put and there's a lot of leverage and a lot of sort of flexiness that these plates can have potentially. Whereas in this scenario, I'm I'm super impressed with this design. Uh, because you basically have the arms acting as a four mil uh, sort of, I don't know if unibody is the right word for it, but the way they join together with the metal brackets sort of makes them act as one unit. And in a sense, they're a little more independent of the bottom plate, uh, which is, I mean, you wouldn't, you could make the whole bottom plate out of four mil, but now you've got unnecessary weight. Right, and you uh, so, but you make the arms out of four mil, which they're the places that's going to take most of the hard hits, and then you sort of integrate them with the bottom plate in an intelligent way, without putting too much stress on the bottom plate. And the result, I th I'm I'm very excited to to try flying it.
because I think the result is is going to be pretty impressive. Um, so, uh, you know, I often say, I've said uh, that, uh, you know, not everybody is going to pay the big bucks for a, a first party frame, like for some from from somebody like Lumineer. Uh, and and I, I we all order off a of Banggood and order the clones sometimes, right? I mean, that's just a thing. Uh, but I got to say, uh, and frankly, I think there's some first party frames out there that don't impress me. I mean, there's some quote unquote first party manufacturers who just took Blackout's idea and basically ripped it off and, you know, made the frame plates a little different and didn't really innovate. Um, and, and so fine. But uh, when I see things like this, or for example, if you think of the Krieger, which I think is a really innovative design, when I look at the boxed in front uh, that uh, the first time I ever saw it was on the uh, the alien so I give soma credit for this boxed in front uh, but then if you look at if you look at how Lumineer has done the camera it's I think it's very very clever if you look at the alien the camera tilt mechanism on the alien is like it's pretty complicated you know compared to this where we've just got these three screw holes one, two, three, and you pick the one that you want to mount your camera in, and then you tilt the camera up till it till it braces against the top plate, and you're done. And you basically, the more forward you go, the more camera angle you get, right? It's just so elegantly simple. I'm, I'm super impressed with it. Um, so you look at ideas like that, and that's where I feel like uh, if you have the money to spend, going with a, a first-party frame like this is is beneficial because you are... I mean, somebody's got to come up with these ideas. Uh, you know, if you look at the Chinese frame manufacturers, they're sort of, you know, going through a grab bag of all these ideas and putting them together, and they're cranking out these frames. Uh, never mind the fact that this is probably better carbon, et cetera, et cetera. But I really feel like the big thing you get when you, you're doing when you buy one of these first-party frames is, is that you're rewarding the people who come up with these clever ideas and, and incentivizing them to keep coming up with clever ideas. So... Um, the other thing I want to show you is that this is actually the QAVR XL. And you can see I've got the two top plates here. Let me turn them sideways. I've got the two top plates here. This one is the same one, I, I think, I'm pretty sure, uh, it's the same one that you would see on a QAV210. Uh, Luminaire has been using sort of a common top plate through many of their designs, I think since at least the QAV210. Uh, and it is ideal and designed for, I think, around a 1300 milliamp hour battery. And in fact, they've designed the CG, etc., cetera, to, with, a, with a GoPro and a 1300 milliamp hour battery to be just right. But what if you want to run like an 1800 milliamp hour battery? Like I have on this, I have some 2000 kV 2206 motors. And I think these guys are just going to be beasts. They would be beasts on a, on a 60, 40, or 60, 45 prop. But this is a 5-inch frame. I think they're going to be just beasts on maybe like those Dow 5045 bullnoses that I tried that were just a little too much for uh, my 2250 kV motors on my other copter. I think they're going to really kick butt. But I definitely think they're going to want an, like an 1865C battery uh, to feed them. And... That's where this frame comes in. So this is the top plate. Uh, they're calling it the QAVR XL, extra long. And this is also the bottom plate. And so it's going to be a little bit longer and have more room up top to have an 1800 milliamp hour battery on top with a GoPro and still have your CG be just where it needs to be. And this is the, the regular QAVR, which is the same size top plate as, uh, for example, the QAV210. Um, anyway, I will definitely keep you informed as I complete this build. Uh, and, uh, you know, there you go. And, uh, thank, uh, and also let me just say, uh, this, I was super, super excited, uh, when I got the call from Lumineer, uh, because, you know, we, I make these videos because I like making them and I like talking about this stuff. I'm talking about black box, etc. But at the end of the day, I mean, isn't it every YouTube channel person's dream to have vendors send them free stuff? I mean, come on, who wouldn't like that? So thank you guys for subscribing and, uh, you know, and for who would ever thought a weird channel about black box tuning would get. I'm uh, 17. I'm almost to 1,800 subscribers now. I have something in mind for, our, for my 2,000 subscriber special, so keep an eye out for that. Um, who would have ever thought? And here I am. And now, woo, woo, finally, pay dirt. <laughs> I got a free frame. So thank you guys very much for subscribing, for watching, and for uh, discussing. Uh, that's it. Happy flying.